House of the Dead video game review. You're a male arriving at a house because, and this part I'm pretty sure about, your fiancé slash wife is there. Actually, there's a sort of introductory cutscene that has you, I guess, listening to the answering machine and she called your house and left a message ensuring that she was as vague as possible. Anyway, you get there, you're supposed to rescue her, and zombies. Zombies all over this house. And you have a gun, so you shoot them. And there's someone behind it, and more zombies. That's pretty much this entire game. There's really not a lot of plot, or if it is, it if there is, it certainly wasn't put in the game. This is a rail shooter, and for anyone who doesn't know what that is, because I'm not sure they make very many of them anymore, it's basically... it's a very simple concept. The only thing the player has to do is aim and shoot. In a couple of rail shooters, you also like take cover, and there might be more than one attack or weapon, but that really is the essence of it. You aim and you shoot. You don't move, you don't find the way, you know, some of, a bunch of these don't even have like puzzles to solve. It's just, there are enemies and you have to shoot them. That sounds like it could get really stale and repetitive fast, and some of them do. Thus, they had to do something to keep your interest, and while I will admit that I'm not exactly an export, expert on rail shooters, I do think that this one does one of the better jobs of keeping your interest. And I would, at this point in the review, like to note that I this game is not for children, it is for adult audiences. And I will be ex you know, going into detail about some of the explicit graphic gore, blood, and violence in the game. So, yeah. Basically, every single time you shoot an enemy, a zombie, pretty much regardless of which zombie it is, well, a good half of them, Certainly almost all of the humanoid ones. You can actually tell that you shot them there. You know, it has a... I don't know, they... I guess they like mapped out the human anatomy and they just decided, well, what would happen if, you know, a bullet was, you know, hit this part of the body? Well, this chunk of meat would be torn off. Well, okay, let's do that in the game. And that's for the entire game. You know, you can... If you want an enemy to be slowed down a bit, you know, they, they will be slowed down whenever you shoot them, but if you shoot them in the thigh, they will, you know, do a jerky movement. You know, they do... That's one of the best. They actually have the movement. You know, this is not that stupid BS new zombies that move fast. Those are not zombies. Okay, I don't know what they are. They're not zombies. Maybe they're infected with a rage virus. Virus. I don't know. I don't care. They're not zombies. Zombies move slow. There are a lot of them, and eventually you're gonna run out of ammo, and they will gradually overrun you. It's the certainty. It's the impending... not the impending. It's the inevitability of it. It's the fact that they will eventually get to you. You know, that's what makes them so freaking scary. That and the whole cannibalism, but yeah. In the game, you know, shoot them in the thigh, they will do a jerky movement downwards, and then gradually, you know, relatively quickly, re retain their composure. But in the second or so that that takes them, you will have fired more bullets into it, you know. And, yeah, pretty much every... One of the really fun things, also, is if you see them attacking you with, let's say, their right arm, you shoot their right arm, and you blow it clean off, and you have to remember, these are zombies, they're, they're not smart, that's why they want to eat everybody else's brain, you know, they're like religious people in that respect. 
they just, you know, when they see something smart, they chomp down on it like you wouldn't believe. Anyway, so if you, if you blow that arm off and they're, you know, they won't register it right away, so they'll just attack you with the stump. And again, they won't have, like, course corrected for the fact that their arm is now a bit shorter, so they'll just be you know, smacking a stump your way. They won't actually hit you. They, you won't take any damage. And then, you know, that only works once, of course. Afterwards, they'll attack with the other arm. You can blow that off as, to, as well. And they're, they might still be alive. They'll, you know, try to, I don't know, headbutt you, bite at you, something, you know. It's only a flesh wound. And that really goes for the entire game. And you can have a lot of fun just blowing these, you know, life, well, not entirely lifeless, corpses, these walking corpses apart, you know, a bunch of them, if you shoot their head, and you only shoot their head, you know, they do have, obviously, after a while, they will just, I don't know, die, quit, at least, and blink out of existence, and, yeah, that, you know, if you, if you start out shooting, like, their legs or their arms and then you go to their head or chest they'll die really quickly but you can't blow if you shoot enough at their chest you'll blow the entire top half of their body clean off that is awesome if you shoot their head enough times and you only shoot their head some of them you can clearly see an eyeball flying away from the hair from the head once you've blown it completely apart you know some of them you can shoot the head off as in you shoot the neck and the head will be detached from the body. And then you have all these different types of zombies. Again, just to you know, keep things fresh, because really, this is, that also actually goes to the length of this game. This was originally in the arcade, so, you know, it just, they wanted you to drop some quarters in and you'd be playing for a while. The game is 15 minutes from start to finish. Yeah. I guess I should briefly go over the the replayability. Basically, there are two ways you can play the main game. Just the arcade mode, which is just straightforward, you just play the game. And then there's the PC mode, which is essentially the same, but you can choose a character. Characters, the only way they actually matter is how much damage they do, how quickly they reload, how many bullets they have in the okay, clip, and how many life lamps they they look like you know the arabic like lamps with the fire and the like a land with, with the fire and the yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know why they thought that this would represent life well instead of like hearts or yeah, anything else but whatever that's what they chose and yeah basically and then there's a boss mode in which you obviously fight the boss enemies in a row and yeah that's really it then there are three difficulty settings and you yourself can adjust how many of the life lamps you have how many continues you have which is what happens when you know this is for the, you know back in the old days there would be continues in games which is when you run out of lives or something and you can then continue you know doesn't happen much in games anymore i don't think yeah and there's the there's this feature called auto reload which you can switch on or off and if it's you know if it's on you never have to reload if it's off you either have to shoot outside of the screen as it will tell you it's yeah, brilliant i love the communication of this game literally if you're trying to fire if you're clicking the the trigger key which is that's also the great thing when you're setting up like an additional controller for this or something you only actually have to place two buttons unless it's something where you know, if you play using the keyboard you'll also have to tell it you know i want to use the up down and left right arrows or it'll actually basically know but you can adjust it if you want and i believe two players can actually use the same keyboard you know sitting at different parts but, but yeah there's a two player feature we'll get to that and you know, basically, there's just two buttons to set up the, you know, shoot and reload keys. But yeah, if you try to click the shoot key and you don't have any bullets left, it will say shoot outside of the 
reload, reload, shoot outside of the screen. And yeah, once you do that, or you can click the reload button and then it'll reload. Unless all the reload is on. Anyway, yes, not a ton of replayability. There is a high score and they do a nice job of making it genuinely challenging to top it. But yeah, some people are not gonna want... I. I knew this one guy who literally told me once he'd beaten it once, he sold it because there wasn't anything left to, but then again, he said he did the same thing with House Heart of Darkness. So yeah, I don't listen to him. I didn't listen to him. Anyway, he's not dead, I just don't have any contact with him. Anyway, yeah, basically... It depends on if you're the type of, the type of person who will want to replay this over and over, or if not, you know. Arguably, from the second and onwards, they have more replayability, but I personally think this is by far the best of the original concept. Overkill is a different take on this same, on a rail shooter. You know, I already did a review of that. If you want my thoughts on that, watch my video on that. Anyway, I do think this is the best one of the original concept. It has a real sort of gothic dark style to it that 2 and 3, I haven't played for, I don't know of a way to play it. I, I haven't seen it in any arcade and I haven't seen it in any other format either. But yeah, this one has a this just great tone to it and it's incredibly cinematic. It just... For this entire 15 minute running time, you can never really breathe. You know, you're, you're just holding your breath for 15 minutes, basically. It's, it's great practice if you want to, like, you know, go diving or something. Just every single time you see the hero, literally, the first thing you see, someone's being attacked by a zombie. Oh crap, that's not good. Car drives up. Car door opens, your hero gets out, loads the gun, and then it goes into the first person camera perspective, which you know, makes a pretty good amount of sense for a rail shooter, and which is actually, it actually sticks pretty well to this throughout the rest of the game. It only goes to a third person camera when we have to show our hero moving, you know, in an, you know, at the end of every. Well, certainly at the beginning of every level, it shows him moving to the new area, you know. And each of these are cinematic. Each of these are so exciting, you know. I already told you the first one. I'm, I refuse to give away the other ones because they're just, they're, they're not like massively cool, but they're always genuinely exciting, you know. It's not necessarily stuff you haven't seen before, but I do wish more games would do this, you know. It, if you've watched my Terminator review, or you know me as a person, you know I love when stuff is intensive, you know. When entertainment just says, you know, screw it, people don't need to breathe. We just, you know, and that they do it right. That is also very important. I can't stand Stephen Somers, you know. There, there's a limit. There's, you know, you shouldn't go past a certain threshold because then we'll just be, you know, annoyed. And then we'll just be wanting it to stop. But this treads that balance perfectly. Anyway, I was talking for like, you know, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, I was talking about different zombie types. You have, you know, other than just regular, hum regular humanoid ones, and these come in various different shapes and even sizes, you know. There's big muscly ones, which of course can take more bullets. There's smaller ones, which can take fewer. One type is wearing like a business suit, which makes me really wonder what he, you know, was this guy a businessman before? You know, anyway, there are, you know, there are animal zombies, there are little screaming monkey zombies, there are bird zombies, there are bat zombies, spider zombies, frog and, I don't know, leech, worm kind of thing, zombies, you know, everything. And they'll come at you with different stuff, you know, some of them will be carrying like an axe in each hand and if they're at a distance they might even throw it and some of them throw 
knives at you. And the great thing about the throwing, you know, I mentioned earlier, other rail shooters might let you dodge. This game, no dodge feature, you know, you can never take cover or anything like that. You're always exposed. But everything thrown at you, and that is another thing I love about this game, anything thrown at you can be stopped. Usually you can shoot the thing itself, so literally you're trying to shoot a knife flying through the air at you, you know, it's not gonna like stand still and and you're not gonna have more than a second or two to shoot it before it hits you, you know. And, you know, other stuff, you might have to shoot the person trying to throw it at you, you know, if it's something that just can't be shot. The locations are pretty cool, you know, you start out outside this grandiose mansion and then you move through it and you know through the game you go through this large like industrial type area you go through you might go through like zoo sewers yes spoonie there's always a spoon a sewer level spooch level anyway and you know but yeah the, the game just never lets up it really basically when a, uh, when there's at least one zombie moving towards you on the screen or threatening the life of a civilian, there are also civilians, all of them, it's usually nice and easy to tell them apart from the zombies, not only because of the whole skin color thing. In fact, the zombies in this have, like, gray skin or, you know, they look nasty. They are, it's just a great, you know, you can tell this, this is really, you're killing monsters, you know, there's nothing, like... And just the sounds they make. The sound side of this is excellent as well. You know, just the noises that the zombies will make. And the sound of something being blown apart. Of body parts being blown apart. Really well chosen. And you, you gotta remember, this is, you know, this is not a new game. This is from 1998. So, you know... And that does show on the graphics, you know, if you're, if you're not comfortable with slightly older graphics, you know, they do look good. There's not that much, you know, it's just a sort of, there's, there's a limitation to them compared to newer games. But still, they do actually make for a pretty decent scope, you know, it looks big, the stuff in it. The locations and... The amounts of zombies sometimes. But yes, anytime there's a zombie, you know, that you have to kill. There are a couple of zombies that are just, like, in the background. And those you don't have to kill to move on. But if you're... If there's a zombie in front of you, until you kill that or those zombies, you won't actually move on. But the moment that they're dead, you will be moving on. And... Within a second or so, there'll be another zombie. And the entrances of these zombies also, you know, they'll... There's one that chops his way through a door using his axes, you know. They will come bursting in through the window. They'll be staying right around the corner. You know, th this really hits so many of the basic, you know, instinctive fears, you know, that they'll literally... Exactly where you're not looking right at this second is where something dangerous is, you know, that's that's one of the greatest fears and usually that's also Usually it sort of makes sense that there would be a zombie there like it's not like in Resident Evil where you might be Going back and forth between different rooms and because you just made a little progress suddenly There's a zombie in a room that where there wasn't one before you know you're always moving through new areas, and, I don't know, I guess the zombies are just waiting for you, that, you know, but that's the kind of thing you could say about any game, that why are the enemies just waiting around for you to kill them? And, you know, th there's one zombie that's like a big tubby one, and he's got, like, a chainsaw that he'll, you know, shake over his head, and just this kind of stuff. You know, the boss enemies are great, I will not give them away. But there are also really, you know, sort of arch, ar archetypes. And, you know, I would say that the best 
boss enemies, the best ideas for boss enemies are almost exclusively in this game. You know, again, excluding Overkill because it's really a different conversation. The one exception is one boss in the second one, which I, you know, I'll be discussing the second game in a video, in a separate video. But yeah, so basically, you can be, you know, the, the game moves as fast as you do. So if you take one second to kill the couple of zombies that have just amassed in front of you, it will just take that, you know, amount of time before you're moving on to something else. But if you need several seconds, then yeah, several seconds it is. I should also talk about the two-player feature. This is one of those games where if you play as two players, you know, it really doesn't make a huge difference if you're playing as one person or if there's two of you. The game is challenging because depending on how many players there are, there's, you know, it gets a proper ratio of enemies to, you know, fitting that amount. So, if there's two of you, there will most of the time be enough enemies that, you know, you can still... Yeah, it, it does a pretty good job of that. You can choose the blood color between a couple of different, uh, you know, very... I don't know, very um, basic colors, I guess you could say, you know, red, green, I think yellow, purple, something like that. Based on whether or not you save the civilians, there are a couple of different paths through the game, and it's not like that, you know, the levels that have these different paths don't have just, you know, like two basic paths, it's like, you know, at point A you might be taking a different path and then at point B again you might take, you know, go back to the original path or go to a third path or something, so yeah, that does provide for a little bit of, you know, replayability and I would say that, you know, not everyone will be able to complete the game in the first... You know, it's been a while since I played this for the first time, sort of, since, you know, installing it. So, I don't remember if it's, like, very challenging the very first time. You know, it, it might be that, like, you're not allowed as many lives or something, you know. In the arcade, I believe it was a bit of a, you know... It ate your quarters up. It just, you, you'd be standing there for a while trying to get through. Because instead of like continues, it would be, you know, insert more quarters. So, yeah. And I think there was still a limit to, you know, after a while it would just say, nope, you can't just insert more quarters, you're going to have to start all over. So, yeah. I sympathize with the people who are just in that situation. But at the same time, I do kind of envy that because the only option I have for playing it now is on the computer. And while it's cool enough to use your mouse to shoot, you know, the second and the third have been re-released for the Wii, you know, like Overkill was released for the Wii. That's really how you play these and that's a great, another great thing about the Wii is if I hadn't already, you know, praised that machine enough. This is how you play these games, you know, you got a gun in your hand, and yeah, um, we're not talking about, like, just holding the Wiimote, you can actually buy, you know, and some of the... shop around, obviously, some of them are quite reasonably priced. You can actually buy something that you stick your Wiimote into, and it emulates holding a gun in your hand, and it works great on the Wii. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. I'm not sure there's really anything left. Well, the characters are just delightfully just the, the lead is bland or the leads, you know, and if if you're playing as two players, there's two of you. But don't worry, it's not an immoral game. She's only married to one of them. The other one is like the friend or something. There's, you know, Sophie, the wife fiance 
girlfriend. I don't know. And, you know, Curian, the bad guy behind it all, who shuns motivation because who needs that? He just, I don't know, he's made an army of zombies and bo a couple of boss enemies and yeah, I don't know, I guess he intends to take over the world. Of course. Something. Yeah. And pretty much every line is a not even thinly veiled, just extremely obvious, I guess, fortune cookie advice, kind of a Japanese moral lesson. I really hope the game actually is from Japan. I think it is. But yeah, it's just, it, it couldn't be more obvious. And maybe it's just that something is lost in translation. But I have trouble imagining that these lines ever sounded particularly good. There's one part where the hero assures Curian, who can't actually hear him, I, I presume at least, they're not in the same room. We won't let you have it your way, Curian. Yeah. And when, when you meet Curian, he tells you that he admires your consistency. He, he must admit that he really admires your consistency. I, I'm not even sure what that's supposed to mean. But, yeah, and... But yeah, anyway, the boss enemies... You know, I've already said that, you know, they're you know, good designs and uh, clever ideas, and that they're these archetypes of, you know, it's, it's stuff you find creepy. And, it's, and the Japanese, the Japanese are great at crafting these mythical beasts that you really, you know, you don't want Americans doing a game like this because the boss enemies would just not be the same. You know, the Japanese, yeah, they, they just, the, the culture really lends them a lot of, you know, they, they're really, really good at this. Anyway, the fights are also sufficiently challenging, and again, very cinematic. You know, you really feel like you, you know, well, I'm, I'm, you know, cinematic and intense. So they're like, this is stuff I wouldn't mind seeing in a movie. You know, and when you're there fighting, it it really is intense. You know, it really feels like you're just barely getting by and it is extremely dangerous and you know of course you can choose to really challenge yourself you know you can put it to the hardest difficulty setting and you can give yourself almost no life and no continues you know if you choose to the game is as easy or as difficult as you make it or at least you know you might have to unlock these you know the ability to adjust or how much life and how many continues all that stuff but yeah you know that is how it works. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Yeah, well, I will close on saying that part of what this really has, that I guess the second and the third, but I barely even remember the third, and that's not necessarily the third's fault. It's just I really had much less opportunity to play it. I only got to play that once it was, you know, released, packaged with the second one for the Wii. Before that, I've only played the demo. Whereas, you know, the first, I've been playing since 98. The second, not that far off. I, well, you know, it wasn't released in 98, but... 99, 2000, somewhere around that. I've been playing it since... I don't know, a couple of years after that. And the third one, I've only been playing for a year or two, and not much for that, and that's partially also because of... It doesn't appeal to me quite as much as the first, or even the second. But what is really... You know, part of what the second does... It gets more goofy, you know, I think it's partially because there's more of it. The second game is like mm, twice as long, maybe slightly more than twice as long, so you know, still not a long game, but I don't know, 45 minutes maybe, maybe an hour, somewhere around that, and 
because of that, you're subjected to more of these lines of dialogue and more of these vapid characters, more bad guys with questionable motivation, and, well, more time with the bad guy with the questionable motivation. And it just really does, you know, yeah. And I would say it's less cinematic, it's less compelling, less convincing, it's much less dark. You know, and I guess parts of it are dark. And it does have some cool concepts, but yeah. This will always be my favorite of the original ones, and I really wish Sega would re-release it for the Wii, you know. Just package it with another game or something like you did with the second and the third one. I... Yeah. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.